Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today's Meeting of the Minds webinar entitled Towards a Regional Mobility as a Service Solution, Leveraging a Transit Smart Card Program Across Multiple Transit Agencies. During each webinar, we take a, a short reading on who's joined us. So you'll see a poll pop up now asking which sector best defines you. If you could fill that out, that's very helpful for us to figure out who's exactly in the room with us. My name is Jesse feller Hahn, and I'm the Executive Director of Meeting of the Minds. As many of you know, Meeting of the Minds is a global thought leadership network and platform for knowledge sharing with year-round digital and in-person programming. We connect global urban sustainability, innovation, and technology leaders across sectors to share best practices, tools, and solutions through our blog, monthly webinar series, and more than 20 in-person events each year. Our next event is in Cleveland on September 26th focused on how anchor institutions are partnering with startups. Today's webinar is very much a preview into many of the topics and tools we will be discussing at our 12th annual Fall Leadership Summit, which convenes in Sacramento, California from November 27th to 29th. Registration is open and early bird pricing ends in two weeks on August 17th. Cubic will be with us there, um, as well as hopefully LA Metro to talk more about um, all of the work that the two organizations are doing in regarding mobility as a service and more. Scholarships are also available for public sector leaders, nonprofit executives, entrepreneurs, and academics to attend all of our events throughout the year. You can find more information about our scholarships in the footer of our homepage on the website. All information about our events is available at meetingoftheminds.org. A few housekeeping notes to begin. Because of our very large audience in attendance today, you will remain muted throughout the event. Today's slides and a recording of today's webinar will be available on our website after the event for you to share with colleagues that couldn't make it today. And we will email that out to you tomorrow. Uh, Robin O'Hara's slides are actually already available as a PDF in the handouts panel and your control panel on the right of your screen at the second to bottom um, option in the control panel. We will have a Q&A during the second half of the hour. So when you have a question, please type them into the questions panel in your attendee control panel as you think of them. So we've got those poll results to pop up. And that's very helpful to, to see who's in the room. Lots of private sector, public sector, and a um, smaller amount of nonprofit, and, and a sliver of philanthropy and academia. OK, thanks, everybody. That's helpful. We would really appreciate everyone's input regarding today's webinar. So a short survey will pop up when you close your browser at the end of the event. And I'm pleased to introduce our two presenters today. We have David DeCozen, who's Vice President of Business Development at Cubic Transportation Systems, Inc. David leads business development and account management activities across the Western United States and Canada. Over more than 25 years, David has held a range of management positions at Cubic, having at various times led marketing, proposal development, research and development, and strategic planning. He has been at the forefront of the company's contactless mobile initiatives representing Cubic on various industry standardization and trade groups, including the Smart Card Alliance Transportation Council and APSA's Universal Transit Fair Card Standards Task Force. We also have Robin O'Hara, who is Deputy Executive Officer and Head of Customer Experience for the Regional TAP Smart Card Program at Los Angeles Metro. The TAP program consists of 27 agencies serving 11 million people in Los Angeles County. O'Hara possesses a combination of technical expertise and communication marketing experience enabling her to lead complex technical projects while keeping an eye on the customer experience. She recently directed the implementation of a new cloud-based regional customer relationship management system for TAP, and she is currently working on an economical hybrid integration between transit and regional bike sharing, parking, microtransit, and other account-based programs. So without further ado, we will pass the ball to David, and then we'll hear from Robin after David. David, you're up. Thank you. Thanks for everybody to join and listen in. Um, I, just for those of you who don't know who Cubic is, just a quick one. You know, we are the largest provider of integrated fare management systems and services. Uh, most of the larger properties in North America, UK, Australia uh, utilize our systems and services. Uh, today, we'll talk a little bit about um, mobility as a service and how that ties back to uh, mass transit and uh, the more recent uh, renovation, modernization, uh, the solutions that are taking ad advantage of the technologies that are coming into the marketplace. Uh, you'll see there's big programs happening all over the world right now in terms of uh, global modernization of fare systems to embrace 
the latest in uh, telecommunications, open payments, account-based processing, et cetera. Uh, that creates a strong foundation um, for mobility as a service initiatives, but it struck me that um, you know, if you have 10 people, uh, what is mobility as a service, you might get 10 different answers. So we came up with our own definition in the context of public transportation. Uh, I'll, I'll just read this. Uh, a combination of public and private transportation services within a given regional environment that provides a holistic, optimal, and people-centered suite of travel options to enable end-to-end -end journeys paid for by the user as a single charge and which aims to achieve key public equity objectives. And that, of course, is quite important. And you know, mass transit uh, at its core needs to respond to the entire uh, breadth of demographics in a region and achieve those uh, equity objectives. So when we talk about the components of mobility as a service, um, we're really talking about how to tie together the various facets of transportation in a region. Uh, we're talking end-to-end -end journeys from door to door, uh, tying together uh, integrated public-private transport networks. So you've got conventional public transit, rail, bus, metro, uh, and then linking that together in a seamless environment with private services, whether they be Lyft and Uber type services, uh, you know, uh, car share services, bike share services, parking, a variety of uh, mobility related services that um, tie back to an end to end journey from the uh, consumer's uh, door to work or to school or whatever the destination may be. Um, that gets back to the concept of integrated journey planning, first and last mile services. How does a uh, consumer uh, avail themselves of the various facets of the transportation network? How do they understand how they interconnect and how do they tie together into an, uh, a linked journey? Uh, that can happen through uh, the linking of third party apps via APIs. And you'll hear a little bit today about front-end solutions that uh, can facilitate uh, that by having the proper suites of infrastructure behind it. Um, we're really talking about uh, holistic preferred and optimal solutions, uh, the, the ability for a user to plan their trip based upon their priorities, um, whether that's uh, you know, speed to destination, whether they're trying to optimize environmental concerns, or uh, also how do you present various options to a user based on past history and or their stated preferences. Um, Real-time passenger information comes into play here where uh, effectively uh, the journey plan may uh, be changed midstream or may be influenced by data that's coming in from various sources across the transportation fabric, whether that's from traffic management centers, whether that's from uh, real-time passenger information systems that are run by the transit properties and other sources of data that uh, are created by the various stakeholders in the network. Um, the, the notion of, the, of one account here, uh, there is a payment component to it, but it's really more about uh, linking these services together and making them visible to a user and having a single account relationship that facilitates uh, doing just what we described here, which is, you know, providing the uh, journey plan and or the information that is most relevant to that particular user, given their history and the particular journey they're attempting to take. So the next slide kind of looks at, you know, the legacy environments versus the objectives that we are talking about. Um, historically, each of these different modes of travel um, were uh, completely segregated systems uh, the, the objective here is now, how do you connect them together? Clearly, they'll be provided by a series of different specialist providers that are operating within the specific verticals, but how do you create the interfaces through APIs and shared services that allow the aggregation of the information so that it can be uh, appropriately displayed to the user uh, so that these sorts of uh, intelligent journey planning and booking services can take place? 
So we get to Cubic has been talking in it in its vernacular. We we put a uh, a name on this, which is really Next City. It's been a vision that's been driving our core developments on our R&D side and how we've been partnering with the various uh, uh, stakeholders in the industry. It's really you know characterizing this vision of how you can create this real-time interface for planning, booking, and reserving services and facilitating the integration across systems. We've been in, investing quite a bit into the underlying technology can, that can help tie these things together. Um, it really brings around a next level architecture. And these components, uh, you know, I think the idea here, and you're gonna hear Robin talk about a specific implementation. Uh, as we go from city to city, the underlying components might change a little bit in terms of uh, how they're constructed and who's building them, but the basic conceptual architecture uh, is captured in this slide where you've got to carry, tie together the various operators, the stakeholders across the user community, um, the sources of data, the ability to tie together payment, wallet services, booking services, ticketing services through some common user interface, the ability to aggregate data whether that's static or real time, and the ability to connect the various transport provi providers, and then ultimately settle back to the different stakeholders uh, so that they're able to collect their revenue based upon the services that they are providing. Mobile becomes a very significant piece to all of this, um, and mobile takes on different forms. Uh, what Cubic has been looking at is across its user community, there's a mobile ecosystem that needs to be responded to across three primary verticals. One is a, an application for the, the traveler, i.e. the consumer, that provides that front end that enables that user to take advantage of these shared services and the interconnections between the stakeholders. This is where uh, account management, account creation, trip planning, payment, and then the deep linking into the uh, third party services takes place. Um, it provides real-time information. It provides the ability to uh, deliver through push notification services, proactive communications to uh, the individual users, and, and basically provide that always with, always on, always with the customer mechanism for that user to take advantage of uh, the infrastructure con connectivity that we've been talking about. From a merchant perspective, account management, you really need to have, and this gets to sort of the social equity piece. Um, historically, most uh, uh, payment applications have really required the user to have a credit card on file and or access to integrated mobile wallet services, which again are uh, tied back to some form of credit instrument. Uh, as we start to look at certain portions of the demography, you've got to be able to deal with cash. And so uh, facilities need to be set up where merchants can allow users to uh, put cash into a wallet, into an account that then facilitates payment for these different kinds of services. And then finally, uh, there are enforcement issues when you start to look at uh, you know, making sure that people are appropriately uh, accessing the network through appropriate credentials and payment transactions. So we've, we've been looking at mobile from these three different uh, perspectives. As we talk about TAP, and uh, you know, th that is the LA Metro's Transit Access Pass program, you're gonna hear more about it from uh, Robin shortly. Uh, we are actually delivering the front-end TAP mobile app, as well as a merchant's app uh, that I previously described. Um, and you'll see here just some very high-level screens. I think the, the, the point here being uh, the app provides the front end to the underlying infrastructure that allows the user to uh, map their journey, manage their card, manage their account, uh, make product selections, uh, select across products from the various participating stakeholders. Uh, Robin will talk a bit about that and basically provide the, the mechanism through which uh, the user out in the uh, community is able to, during their during, either prior to or during the course of their travel, avail themselves of the various services that are being provided. I think with that, I'm going to turn it over to Robin. Uh, I think she's going to be able to describe 
a quite innovative uh, approach to establishing the underlying uh, capabilities that this uh, application will, will be leveraging. Robin, you might want to unmute yourself. We don't hear you yet. Oh, and then I forgot I have to do it on the web, too. All right, thanks. All right. Can you see my screen? Looks great. Can you see my screen? Okay, great. All right. Uh, just a second. Okay. So today I'm going to talk about how TAP is building an innovative hybrid system that integrates mobility as a service and delivers an infinite variety of new options for our customers. So first, I'd like to tell you a little bit about TAP. Um, we're a contactless, chip-based smart card system that operates across LA County. And now this is a pretty giant county. And in fact, um, LA County is larger than 42 of our US states in population. So it's a pretty massive uh, system that we're operating. We have 27 agencies on TAP, including 3,800 regional buses, 99 rail stations, and expanding like crazy. And we have an award-winning paratransit program we do 29 million regional transactions a month, and we have over 750 fare products on our fare table. Uh, we sell over one and a half million passes on TAP cards um, every month, and we sell 12 million in stored value every month. And that's with uh, one of the lowest base prices um, in the nation for, um, for the cost of, of riding transit here. Uh, right now, we have about 440 LA County outlets that sell about 16 million a month, and we have website sales of over 650,000. And we work really hard here in TAP, but it's also a lot of fun, and you can kind of see evidence of this in our uh, whimsical TAP car branding that has a nice, kind of sunny, beachy, mountainy feel. So, this is a photo of our TAP lab, which we call the TAP Retori. And um, now Cubic has built our system, but we do a lot of our own testing and configuration ourselves. And in fact, here in LA, we like to have, we like to take our fate in our own hands. And uh, we recently took our entire customer relationship management system in-house, including customer service touch, touch points like the TAP call center, regional reduced fare processing, corporate, business pass sales, card ordering and processing, and a lot more. We still like our vendors, like Cubic, to do what they do best, but we take on what we can. And so right now, we're building an account-based system that in integrates pretty seamlessly with our existing TAP legacy system. And it's a one-stop shop for payment and program signup, and um, we can connect with any number of programs this way, such as bike share, microtransit, fare subsidy programs, parking, ride hailing, electric vehicle car charging, car sharing, lots of different programs. So what we're building um, uses the powerful Salesforce platform, which is really exploding in growth across the world. I have to stop here and give some props to Mark Kronke from um, Invoke Technologies because this whole system was basically his brainchild. He advised not throwing out our whole card-based TAP system since it's working really well for us and starting from scratch. And, um, and you know, all of the 26 partners plus Metro uh, um, enjoy all of the benefits from being on TAP and it gets us on the system fast. We, we like our TAP card system. So, his idea was to build this regional cloud-based system that will interface with our with our existing cubic built tap backend backend system and um, that provides that will provide a unified payment across multiple programs um, including our massive transit system so lots of other agencies um, such as Chicago New York Boston San Francisco they're building entirely new systems that can cost like half a billion billion and upwards. 
So that can be painful on customers to switch over. And and our consultant, Mark, um, who actually also advises in San Francisco, advised us to keep what's working and layer on top of it. So it's an easier customer transition, and we're doing it for actually pennies on the dollar. So here's how we built the system. We started with our existing cubic belt transit system. And as I said, we built a layer on top that um, that'll connect um, through APIs into our um, Salesforce system that we call TapForce. So we've been working with our Salesforce integrator, Publicist Sapient, to build this system, our TapForce system, for over a year. And um, this layer is built on the Salesforce platform, very, very powerful and versatile platform. And we've dubbed our system, um, as you can see, TapForce. And within this TapForce, we've built a tap wallet that you can add regional funds to. So what, what the tap wallet can do is directly pay for programs such as bike share, and you can also push down um, funds to your cards. But there's potential to, to use this tap wallet now for um, uh, lots of different things like bike share and toll lanes and, and, uh, and electric vehicle car sharing and parking and fare subsidy programs and just tons of different uh, programs that are account-based. So you can see that, that there's just any number of um, options that we can do to use TAP to pay for using our TAP wallet. And, and it really makes um, a seamless um, um, kind of connection between our existing card system and all of the programs that we want to be able to offer to our customers. So um, what's cool, uh, and David showed you just some of our, our TAP mobile screens, but um, the the, the mobile app is, is basically um, like the um, enhancement that enables us to even more seamlessly connect with our, our, our transit system with our, our program. So we're really excited to um, start rolling that out soon. So I'm, I'm going to talk about some of the benefits that we have built. Um, the power of TapForce allows us to share cross-program discounts, for example, if you're a student or a senior, um, you could be automatically eligible, uh, sorry, eligible across programs that have enabled um, the same discount. So this really amounts to what um, Mark, our, our consultant, has dubbed personalized pricing, um, depending on the program registration level. And so no longer do you have to have multiple signups for every single program's discounts. Programs can customize their TAP options and take advantage of many different ways of incentivizing their customers. Another benefit that um, we provide in TAP, uh, the in TAP Force is uh, account loading choices. So we're providing multiple ways for our customers to pay. In addition to credit and debit cards, um, we're integrating with Google and Apple Pay, and we'll also have uh, um, be adding cash loading options through Pay Near Me and PayPal. Um, and I'll talk more about that in a, in a minute. So one of the greatest benefits to building um, TapForce is the ability to quickly incentivize behavior. And for example, if it's, it's, a, if it's a bad air day, we can quickly provide programs dis program discounts such as um, um, you know, free train rides or discounted train rides Bike, discounted bike share rentals that free up traffic. We can, um, we can incentivize customers with um, barcodes and um, that they can use to um, pay for discounts on products. And we can respond to issues such as a breakdown of a train or any other negative event by providing these quick discounts to selected sets of customers that we have in TapForce. It's just a great and versatile way to, um, to be able to handle your system. We built a really cool reward system that's also available across programs. So you can earn these rewards and redeem them for your choice of TAP-enabled programs. Um, the re these rewards are, are really customizable and versatile across programs. So each pro program can choose what they want to give and what they want to receive in points. Um, and what we modeled it after is the Starbucks um, program where you are not forced to choose a free black cup of coffee um, when you've gotten enough points, but, but rather you can choose from the menu. So we are giving our 
our customers a menu of different options, and we think it's really cool. So there's a lot of buzz around equity these days, and TapForce allows us to give our unbanked customers access to programs that were previously out of reach for them. Um, so we have options to load cash into their TAP accounts, and this enables the cash customers to participate in programs like Bike Share, um, where you where before you could only participate if you had a credit or debit card. So um, we are really um, thinking about those things as we as we move forward. So this is really kind of the most complicated slide, and it's a matrix that describes the many different levels of partic participation in TAP Force. Um, the examples of the programs across the top you'll see, um, and the bottom um, part of the slide has the choices they can that they that they can make. So you'll see um, examples of programs, and there could be way more than than what we show here. But um, bike share, transit, toll lanes, parking, electric vehicle car sharing. Those are all um, examples of programs. And down the side where you see uh, uh, underneath um, the word program, you'll see the different um, kind of uh, features of our um, of Tap Force. For example, each um, program can have different products. Um, maybe transit has passes, but maybe other, other um, uh, programs just load money. Um, the, uh, for example, group discounts across can be shared, as we talked about. Um, you'll see that maybe bike share is allowing seniors and low-income people to have a, a particular dim discount, whereas transit has um, a lot of different uh, types of discounts. Maybe toll, toll lanes takes advantage of the low income, but also gives discounts to um, AARP or, or AAA. And, um, um, across so it could be it can be very configurable and um, shared discount counts across programs uh, we are rewards program of course um, I had talked about that so um, hopefully you kind of understood that you might get you know three stars for riding a bike share or or you might earn uh, you might earn certain points for taking um, up, up for parking in a particular lot so um, very configurable again by the programs um, and then you can use those rewards. Maybe you do five bike share rides, you get a train ride, or and you can turn it in for a train ride, ride or, or um, maybe you ride the I-110 toll lanes uh, 16 times, and you get a $5 discount off your mon monthly toll lane um, uh, bill. Um, we're building a badges, uh, kind of a gamification um, way to, in, you know, interest people. Um, where you can earn, uh, ride different types of, of our programs and um, get level, you know, one, two, depending on how many times and how much you use it. Uh, maybe you get two, uh, two stars and you, you're an environmentalist level two. Um, we also will feature promo codes um, that you can get like on the website or we'll be able to use um, social media for a very powerful um, way to connect with our cust customers. Um, and you can use those pro, um, promo codes to um, to get discounts, and they're very very quickly configurable again. So um, I just can't emphasize enough how how easy and um, and versatile the um, system is that we're building. Um, the last thing I want to talk about is a trust level that um, we may or may not use. We're building it, but um, that is where um, as you use the system, your trust um, can increase. And so maybe at some point um, you ride uh, enough and you pay in front enough to increase your trust with bike share so that they give you a minimum balance decrease or perhaps you get on, on transit uh, a super pass loaded to your tap card that allows you to ride and um, pay at the end of the month. So those things are all available to us and um, we're building it and we hope uh, when they build it, um, when we build it, they will come. So we have, I'm having some trouble. Okay. Hang on. Okay. So the TAP mobile app is, um, um, David had talked about it a little bit and showed you some of our screens. Um, this offers us 
uh, a lot of different tools and really makes, it's kind of the finishing touch upon the system that we're building, um, but it really offers us um, a, a lot of benefits to our customers and just continues to make this, the, the system that we're building even more seamless. So you'll see we have multimodal trip tools with uh, payment options. We have uh, a virtual tap card that uh, where you can take your phone and um, tap it on devices at um, on the transit system and then use the phone um, to, to also pay for uh, the program based um, uh, the programs that are that are connected to tap um, it has mobile flash code and barcode event ticketing so we can partner with um, like our rams or chargers or lakers or dodgers here in town and we have uh, account and trip records, um, so customers can quickly see their accounts. There will be program information and links to sign up for the programs that we uh, that we connect to, and it basically um, integrates with all of our account-based programs as well as as the transit program. So um, it just makes everything very very nice and seamless. And um, that's basically it for um, my slides. And I believe there is a Q&A session now, so um, I will turn it back over to the moderator to um, to kind of lead that. I think. Yep. Thanks, Robin, so much. Um, that was that was great, and I, we have a bunch of questions that have already come in for for the two of you. So we are going to move into our Q&A um, for the audience. If you have questions, you can type them into the questions control panel on the right of your screen. We have a bunch that have already come in um, and we'll start um, going through those a bit. But I had a I had one question first and I know there's a, a few questions that have already come in around equity, Robin, and quick question about that. Um, you answered a lot of it by talking about the, the plan with loading cash into TAP accounts, but is, what kind of phone do people need to use those kinds of accounts where they load cash into it? So you don't need a phone at all. Actually, you do need you need you need to have um, web access at some point um, to to use uh, the system. But you, um, our mobile app will actually come out after we la launch the system, and so um, we we have uh, we have so that you can you can go to the website, download a barcode, and print it out on your computer, or you can download the barcode to your phone, and um, you take that barcode to um, over, I think it's like 2,000 locations between um, one and 2,000 locations, but it's the CVS stores and the and the 7-Eleven stores that you see all around. So you can take it to one of those stores, walk right up with your bar barcode, and tell the tell the clerk what um, what you want to put on in, into your tap account, and then you can use that to pay. Um, um, once it goes into your TAP account, you can use that to pay for bike share or for any of the other account-based programs. So it's a pretty cool um, feature for our for our our, um, uh, our folks that are not using credit cards and debit cards. Yeah. Also, to okay. add to that, the the TAP Force wallet will appear in the app, so that if you have funds in the TAP Force wallet, you can also fund product purchases that get loaded to the cart. So you can you know, basically pay for your transit fare through dropping money from the Tap Wars wallet onto the card. Yep. Thanks, you guys. That's really helpful. Um, a lot of questions coming in. And so first one for you, Robin, can you talk a little bit more about the economics of implementing operating the hybrid, i.e. the closed loop card based and open loop account based system that you presented? Seems like this person, Michael DeVito, who said, seems like more parties involved, example, Cubic, Salesforce, others, does that lead to, to more mouths to feed and more expenditures from transit agency perspective? And did LA Metro do a cost of sales analysis that showed before and after comparison of different options before undertaking the effort? And if so, what did that show? Just a, a big question about the economics of implementation and operating all of this. Yeah, so we we definitely did the cost analysis, and um, our our system. Um, yes, we are working with uh, multiple different um, entities to build this. Uh, I think I mentioned P Publicis Sapient um, has has helped us um, build the Salesforce part of it. Cubic is helping us build the app, and 
Um, Mark Cronkey from In Invoke Technologies is helping to build, uh, or he's actually the architect of the system and, and kind of leading the charge here for us. But what, what, um, what we have found is that by doing the hybrid system as opposed to changing out the entire system and building from scratch is, uh, is that we have, we have basically done this for literally pennies on the dollar to what other transit agencies are, are, are spending uh, for changing out their whole system. And, um, you know, we do in, you know, we do incur some costs from, for paying these folks to do what they're doing, but as opposed to building everything new, putting all new equipment in. And uh, I mean, we, we had the infrastructure here, so we had to make some upgrades. We had to do some, we had to do some modifications, but basically what we have here is is a, a hybrid system that we think will work just as well as the, um, you know, half billion dollar systems that, that other uh, transit agencies are building. So we're, we're very excited about that and, and we appreciate the question. Now, part of, I'll also add to that, part of what made that possible for Metro is that, you know, one, the fare collection infrastructure was not as old as what you'll find in some of the other cities that have moved forward uh, with you know broad-based account-based programs. Um, and they also had been very proactive over several years of making asset refresh and modernization investments to keep it current. So you know they had a, a nucleus to start with that uh, you know, was in a position to be leveraged. Great. Thanks, you guys. That's helpful. Um, Thanks, David. Yeah, great. Um, question about uh, all of the, the 27 agencies that you've um, implemented this across. Robin, first for you, and then maybe over to David. Um, how did you go about approaching all the other mobility providers and encourage them to join the TAP platform, and what kind of barriers did you encounter? So I think um, the great thing about the TAP system is that, um, you know, we, we built the TAP system to begin with, and we always have... Um, tried to have as as much communication and as much collaboration with our our municipal partners as we possibly can. Um, we hold frequent meetings. We have we have involved them in all of the um, different um, you know we 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 inform them about everything. Um, we here um, sitting in the metro uh, building. Um, lead the tap charge and we we're the we're tasked with um, operating the system and and um, you know directing it however um, we we always try to involve our muni muni partners um, in that process as much as we can and so um, you know just it's a collaborative approach um, we 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 have um, we had some rocky times to begin with when we first built TAP, but I think over the past um, eight to 12 years, um, you know, the trust has grown with our, our municipal partners, and I can just only advise others to, you know, continue to collaborate and communicate and, um, and, and make those partners, no matter how small, feel like they are a part of the process. And I think that, you know, they have seen the benefits of being on TAP, and in fact, when we were first starting to bring our systems here in the county on tap, I think there was a tipping point at which folks went from uh, not wanting to be in a giant system and wanting to do their own thing. And then suddenly the customer started asking, how come I can't use tap on your system? And so I think um, at, at that tipping point, we started to really get everyone else um, kind of together. Great. And uh, and David, anything to add on on all of, working across all of these agencies? You have the perspective of doing this in multiple regions around the world. And is there a, a secret ingredient and key to success in your mind? Is it a committee structure, the governance structure, or leadership, or just um, hard work every day, or all of the above? <laughs> well, I think the dynamics are unique region by region. Um, I think in this case, you know, Metro has really, you know, provided some great leadership and has been very collaborative working with the agencies. Uh, you know, we of course have had to, you know, support that on the technology side, you know, setting up the back office in such a way that it satisfies the, 
you know, the integrity of the system and the, you know, the specific desires for reporting autonomy and what have you that the uh, individual operators have. So it really becomes a, uh, a team effort. And I think that's, you know, probably the biggest thing is, you know, whether we're talking about the transit authority as the lead or it's, it's stakeholder participants or the, the vendor like ourselves, it's, it's really establishing that spirit of partnership and collaboration. Great. Thanks, you guys. Um, so one question about, uh, for, over to you for quickly, Robin, can the TAP program be expanded or integrated with other mass systems, specifically thinking this uh, Robert Perry's question, he's specifically thinking of coastal Santa Barbara County where there's a lot of transit to and from LA County. So um, the answer to that is uh, we would love to integrate with others and um, you know, the, the scope of our system right now is, is I think is very scalable. Um, so um, I, I, just a simple answer, absolutely yes, we're, we're, looking, we're looking for that and we would love to be able, we've already kind of been in talks with others um, to um, who are interested in what we're doing and and um, that share some of the similarities similarities of our smart card system um, makes it very makes it makes it very easy to integrate. Great, great. Um, and then there's a bunch of questions about how private sector entities participate in the program. Um, you showed a slide that did show TNCs, and there's some questions about whether someone didn't see the Uber and Lyft as programs within the system. Can you talk a little bit about integrating all of the modes and who can sure. opt in from service provider perspective and, and the user perspective? Absolutely. Yeah, so um, um, we have built the system to be either as simple or as complex as the program um, wants to build it. So it can be as simple as um, adapting tap payment into a, an, uh, a Lyft or Uber app and um, allowing the, that to be one of their choices for payment. Or it could be as complicated as bringing all of a program's customers into tap force and, and allowing tap force to pretty much manage uh, the customer service end. So there are, there are levels of, of integration that make it um, you know, pretty, pretty easy or complicated um, to integrate, and it's the program's choice. Great. And so right now they can use, is it integrated already with, for instance, if you're in downtown LA to take a, a subway to a lift to a bus? Is that something you guys can do so, right now? So, yeah, not yet. We're putting the finishing touches on the system, and um, our expected launch is this fall. But um, but you know the plans are to uh, launch with bike share, and um, uh, we're already in talks with microtransit and um, parking. Um, um, we've had some initial conversations with electric vehicle car charging and um, express lanes. We have also been talking to um, there's there's folks that are interested um, uh, from Lyft that we had early talks on and then um, we they they kind of pulled out and now I think um, we are ready to go back to the table with them and and um, and see if they're um, if I've seen they've they've started to have some more interest in that again so we have a lot of uh, we have a lot of potential to add to the programs and, and we just see it burgeoning as, as it rolls out. So um, not, not at your, the answer to your question is not at this minute, but soon. Great, great, great. Um, couple questions about, uh, maybe over to you, David, are there other cities in the US that you know of that are trying to mimic the TAP system in LA? And, and there's another question about um, Helsinki and if you're familiar with what they're doing in, um, regarding payment and if it's if this is similar yeah in terms of other systems um, we are under contract to deliver you know large-scale account-based processing systems there's actually one operational in Chicago um, in those cases we've got operational services contracts which include establishing and supporting CRM capability uh, the apps that are going to be going into these markets are very similar in terms of you know design and focus to what we're doing in TAP. So 
my expectation and you know those programs are in you know a state of evolution but i think the industry um as a whole um is having a, a very constructive dialogue around mobility as a service and i would expect that those pro programs would you know follow similar models um as far as the uh, helsinki uh, i i am not personally uh familiar with exactly what's happening in that market Anything to add there, Robin? No, other than, you know, we haven't really gotten out much to talk. This is one of the first times where I've actually um, been able to, you know, kind of brag about what we're doing here, because um, I do think it's it's a kind of an innovative approach and, and de definitely a less expensive option than, than a lot of other other um, cities. But I um, since we haven't really been out on the, like, the speaker circuit, circuit I feel like, um, it's kind of a, a hidden gem right now, and and I'm I'm excited to um, you know share our good news and and the way we're building this with others. So um, if any cities are interested, I know a couple have already called me, and um, just uh, feel free to reach out to me, and I'm happy to answer questions. Great. And actually, that leads to my next question. A bunch of people are asking for both of your contact information. So if you're willing to share that now or the other option is everyone anybody who wants to get in touch with robin and david can email me jesse j-e-s-s-i-e -S -S -E, at meeting of the minds org and i can connect you individually but robin is there an easy way to get a hold of you that you prefer sure you can email me uh, it's um it's pretty easy to p reach people at metro it's just our last name with our first initial at metro.net so it's o'hara r without the apostrophe um, at metro.net. Great. And David, do you have a preferred way people yeah, getting email. in touch with you? Yeah, the email is probably the easiest way. You know, David dot D E K O Z A N at cubic dot com. Easy. Your full name with a dot in the middle. Okay. Great. Yeah. Thanks, you guys. Um, moving on. Lots of questions. We probably won't get through all of these. Apologies to everybody, but. Um, we hope that you guys can follow up with them individually if you see if you can't if we don't get to your question. So question about data um, from Michael DeVito. Who owns the data in a system like this? Both customer profile demographic data and customer preference, i.e. journey, purchase, et cetera, data. Is monetizing that data part of the business case or economics? First Robin and then over to you, David. Sure. So um, TAP owns all TAP data. Um, and then if we do an integration like I was talking about where we're doing a simple integration, then um, that, that may be a little bit different where, you know, if we're, if we're just a payment device on someone else's, uh, on someone else's app, that, um, that data still belongs to that entity. So it kind of depends, but um, we own all of our own data on this side. Great. Okay. David, any any thoughts about data ownership, yeah, that, et cetera? Yeah, that is typical. Uh, I, in all cases, our customers own their data. In in some cases, we've got contractual provisions where, you know, we can provide value-added services such as anonymizing data, creating anonymized user segmentation data, and then go back to our customers and and propose monetization strategies, but in any case, um, any such strategies are subject to the approval of the agency. And you know, depending upon what market that you're in uh, and the relative sensitivity of, of such uh, topics, uh, you've got you know, stronger or weaker appetites and it varies by, by market. Okay, great. And Robin, when that data is collected from, from TAP, it, can you guys make that available to the public sector agencies um, to analyze regional travel patterns and improve uh, improve those travel patterns for long range planning purposes. Is that something you guys have thought about or had requests? Yes, for? Um, I know we it's can, early on, but absolutely, we can we can provide that, um, and we always have been able to provide you know aggregate data. Um, of course, we don't follow our customers around uh, individually, but we definitely um, can can provide that kind of information for planning purposes. And we'll always know, um, even when we do a simple integration, we'll always know um, the payment inf information and what it was um, 
what it was for. So, you know, that um, that also will help us. So even if we do a simple, very simple integration with a, a, an outside private entity, um, we we will um, be able to utilize the payment information and know what that was for. Great, great. Um, there's some, some more questions about how the program works for the unbanked community, but I'm gonna ask the folks who've asked that question to look back at the, the webinar recording when it's live on the event page later today or tomorrow to, to see what uh, Robin already had to say about that because we've, we've gone over that one. But it, it, the answer for you is, is there. <laughs> Um, and there, we've talked a little bit about, I guess there's a few questions here regarding hacking and security, data security, as well as are there issues with, um, the, oh, what, where is this question? Oh, there's, are there issues with users printing out the, for the unbanked for using cash, uh, being stolen and used, or, you know, all of those issues around security. Robin, any question, any thoughts about not only data security but also security for users if they're using cash or and then the barcode system. So is, is that question for me or for is that that's for oh, me, right? Oh, for you, Robin, for you first, and then maybe over to David. Yeah. So, um, so when you are able to, um, you know, download the the barcode. Um, you're not. It's not worth money until you uh, take it to the take it to the store and ask them to load it into your tap account. So there's nothing that um, there's nothing that you're going to there's nothing that you're going to to have except for a piece of paper for someone to steal until they load it into their tap account. And then you know then it's in there. And um, that as far as just data security, we're always we're always very, very conscious of our customers' um, data security. That's one of the, the most um, important things that we focused on to begin with. It's the number one, um, you know, concern of, uh, of ours. So as we've built the system, we've built in um, as, you know, all of the security features um, that we uh, believe our customers will need to be able to operate safely and, and not to have to, um, not not to have to worry about having their data stolen or um so i i hope that answers the question yeah great and david anything else on data security or payment security well, yeah well obviously there's layers of security i mean when you talk about you've got various forms of credentials whether that's a physical plastic card with a chip or whether that's a, a virtual card residing uh, in a smartphone presented over NFC, or whether it's a barcode that gets validated off the screen, you know, each each one of those credential types uh, exhibit their own security architectures and mechanisms. Um, so obviously, we as a system supplier are very uh, cognizant, and uh, you know, we we have to go through very exhaustive testing uh, to and stand up. So, you know, security. There's a, a broad-based security practice around that, as well as all of the network communications and everything that we we do has to be certified for PCI. I mean, so it goes on. I mean, there's, uh, like I said, that that it's a multi multi-layered uh, topic, um, which you know I'm probably not the best person to talk to, but what I can tell you is that you know we we work with uh, you know very large agencies worldwide and and uh, these systems have to stand up to very rigorous uh, security requirements right we could do an our entire two-hour webinar just on that topic. exactly <laughs> that's not <laughs> the topic today um a bunch of questions about trip planning and door-to-door -door. does tap build for first over to you robin and then david does TAP build the door-to-door -door trip for the customer or does the customer have to select a mode instead of modes to complete the trip so right now our our mobile app, app will be um rolling out in phased uh in phased fashion and so uh, yes I think the ultimate goal is to get to that um but at the at the beginning um we're rolling out the app with some um some uh trip tools where you can uh see bike share locations for example and you can you can plan 
uh, you, you can plan with uh, schedules and and whatnot. But eventually, the, there are definitely plans to get get to that multimodal uh, trip experience where you go from one point and you might ride three different modes of of tap enabled. Um, uh, you know, transit and bike share, and maybe you parked, um, but um, you would be able to do that all, all in one uh, seamless experience. So plan the trip and pay, and and uh, be done with it. So that that's that's definitely on the um, on the radar. Great. And David, um, thoughts about, or actually, question for this seamless experience: Are there any other cities or regions at this scale? in the US that have done this already or is, is LA the first? Um, I think in terms of the, there is a, a, a large, uh, highly used app in Chicago that has plans to do things very similarly over time. Um, you know, I think right now, uh, the only third party element involved in it is the Divi Bike Share program. But there are broader aspirations today that that program links together uh, three different transit properties, commuter rail, suburban bus and inner city bus and rail. Um, but, and then there are several uh, programs that are under contract for delivery uh, that have similar long term uh, plans. But we'll start with an app that's positioned for uh, managing the the uh, transit account relationship and the cr transit credential. Um, but then, you know, the, the whole nature of the design and the architecture that we're putting in place will allow those clients also to evolve and grow in a similar direction that uh, is already starting to take shape in LA. Yeah, I think one of the nice things about working with Cubic is that, um, you know, they they are doing so many things in, in different country countries and cities here in North America. So um, I think uh, the the group of us that all all um, have Cubic as as a vendor, we kind of reap the benefits of, of the cool stuff that they're building, too. So props to you on that, David. Yeah. Thanks, David. Best practice sharing at its best. Um, Stephen Massino um, wants to know if you are looking, Robin, into the two car shares targeted for the Disney franchise. Um, Buffalo car share is one a good example, and urban car share is another one. I don't think those are based in LA, but are you working with any car sharing companies that are working with for low income populations or neighbor, uh, more vulnerable neighborhoods to integrate them into the system? Uh, not yet, but that's definitely an option um, that we that we you know I think our our uh, ability to um, enable the um, I, I think you called it disenfranchised customers to be able to use um, you know uh, unbanked options like cash uh, will will um, you know help us with that equity uh, for that for that population. But I um, you know we're we're entertaining uh, many, many options. And, and I think we are going to be extremely busy over the next couple of years. So um, once we're finished yeah. building the system and we roll it out, we are definitely planning on approaching some other companies. So it'd be interesting to, to get somebody like that in LA. And Blue LA is already launched in our LA DOT launch, right? Which is a good right. example of, of those good car share programs. Um, and you said the launch is in the fall. Jana Linnott wants to wants another another reminder of when you're launching the timeline. Yeah, I I want to uh, kind of preserve the the um, uh, excitement the excitement for that, <laughs> if you don't mind. So I'll 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 just say fall for now. But um, uh, you know, okay. keep keep an Good. eye on us, and and it's happening soon. Great. And one last. Super quick question. Um, can you say the name of your consultant, Mark, and his organization one more time? I think somebody wants to maybe hire him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's pretty brilliant, but um, I've got him here. I don't think he – no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Absolutely, we, we'd be happy to share. Um, his name is Mark Kronke of Invoke Technologies, and uh, he works for both San Francisco and Los Angeles as a consultant, so um, we, we do share. Um, but uh, he's he 
I, I think this, um, I think he will get a lot of um, requests after this because, uh, and he deserves it. It's it, it's a really innovative and, and um, interesting approach. Great. Well, that is fantastic. We obviously didn't get to so many, many of these questions. We got through a lot of them. Um, we are going to wrap up, and a short survey will pop up once everyone closes their browser. And we greatly appreciate your feedback and hope to see you at, at next month's webinar, which is already up on our website, as well as see you commenting on our blog and at one of our many of our upcoming events around North America, including our, our biggest event of the year, which is our fall annual summit, which is um, in Sacramento in November, all available at meaningoftheminds.org. Um, and that really concludes our session for today. Just want to thank you so much, Robin and David, for your time and energy and sharing this exciting work that you haven't been able to share yet. So we love to be the first <laughs> one, first platform to share that. Thank you so much for all of your time today, Robin and David. Thank You're you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. See you at next month's webinar and have a great day. Thank Take you. Care. Bye. Bye.